News Radio 1000, KTOK. I'm Gwen Falk and Earl Libert. Well, for many months now, we have been following the case of the Oklahoma Turnpike Authority and their new program called Access Oklahoma. Here with me in studio is Randy Carter. He is the Director of Strategic Communication for a group called Pikeoff Oklahoma. Is that right? Uh, Pikeoff OTA. OTA. Yes. All right. And uh, we have an important update and a special guest joining us tonight. Uh, Randy, let me let you go first uh, before we uh, ask Stan Ward, uh, one of the attorneys that uh, presented the case and is also a party to the suit to explain the current status. So take us back. Uh, What was Access Oklahoma and how did it affect you? Well, Access Oklahoma was unveiled back in February um, of this year uh, to a complete surprise, as as it will be obvious uh, here as we unfold this story a little bit, uh, to the general public and those of us that were directly affected. And Stan and I both have homes uh, that are in the direct path of this turnpike. So we'll just clear the air with that and let everybody know that we are directly affected and, uh, and quite obviously interested in this case. So what happened is... Uh, uh, Stan Ward and and, and some other attorneys and about 246 plaintiffs filed a lawsuit uh, that alleged that the uh, uh, Oklahoma Turnpike Authority violated the Open Meetings Act back in January and February by failing to put on the agenda uh, the items of Access Oklahoma that were officially unveiled in February of 2022. they filed a law. They filed this lawsuit on the open meetings violation, uh, I believe, uh, in July. So Stan can clear that up exactly when it was. And then, of course, there was a lot of uh, uh, court wrangling and motions for dismissal and writs of prohibition. And uh, again, like I say, I'm not a lawyer. I only play one on Facebook. So uh, uh, Stan can clear out all this legal stuff. But what has happened is that case finally uh, has been adjudicated. Uh, the, uh, uh, in the, Cleveland County. Correct? In Cleveland County, yes. Cleveland County Court. Uh, it was a Seminole County judge who had been assigned the case uh, for Cleveland County because uh, the it was re- the judges recused themselves in Cleveland County. Uh, but the uh, both the Turnpike Authority and the plaintiffs in the case asked for a summary judgment, and that is exactly what happened uh, on de- back in the first part of December. Judge Olson ruled in favor of the plaintiffs 100% in a summary judgment that the Oklahoma Turnpike Authority willfully violated, again, willfully is an important word here, willfully violated the Open Meetings Act, and therefore all of the actions relating to the Access Oklahoma program taken in the January and February meetings are invalid. Stan, did I say that okay? You certainly did, Randy. You did a great job. And Stan Ward is one of the plaintiff attorneys and party to the suit. The Okay, guys, this is what really uh, confused me, if I can say it that way. The Oklahoma Turnpike Authority said they had not drawn the exact route, and yet they were purchasing land, and you guys think it was going to go th- through each of your homes, correct? That is exactly where the line is drawn, that they don't know specifically where it's going to be. We've been talking all along that uh, the map that they projected, uh, our people sat down and, and just with Google Maps and the map that OTA has drawn, figured out that about 600, over 600 homes and properties were going to be taken in this uh, geometrically more than any properties have ever been taken in the history of a turnpike in Oklahoma. Uh, Stan Ward, let me ask you a question. What made you think to go the route of the open meetings law? Several years ago, Gwen, I represented the fraternal order of the police against the city of Norman when there was a defunding effort that was undertaken by the city to defund the police department in the amount of $865,000. That is precisely the law that we used to have that particular action declared to be invalid. 
I've been familiar with the Open Meeting Act for many years. It was enacted in 1977 by the legislature. It's a very short piece of legislation, but its intent is to guarantee that we have an informed citizenry in the state of Oklahoma that they can participate in government decisions and have meaningful input. And quite frankly, these agendas that are published to give notice to the public must be written in language that an ordinary person of education and intelligence can understand the nature of the business to be conducted at a public meeting. The penalties for violation are rather severe because they're both civil and criminal in nature. If there is a finding that the act has been willfully violated, it makes any action taken invalid. Also, a violation of the Open Meeting Act can potentially expose the violator to a misdemeanor charge that carries with it a penalty of up to one year in the county jail and a fine of $500 or both. So I've been aware of this legislation for many years, and it appeared to me that's exactly what happened once we were afforded the review of a bunch of papers that had been filed by the Oklahoma Turnpike Authority. So it was what, obvious that they'd made a very deliberate attempt to mask their actions and to hide from the public what their true intent was with this program that was ultimately named the Access Oklahoma Program. So as a result of the judge's ruling in your favor, in the plaintiff's favor, what now happens to Access Oklahoma? We take the position, and we believe that we're correct, that any action taken in January and February of this year with reference to the Access Oklahoma program is invalid because it was a willful violation as found by the Honorable Timothy Olson, who was the judge presiding in this case. And so anything that they've done on this program is invalid? Well, here's the biggest problem they have. In January, they approved a contract for $4.96 million to an engineering firm called Poe & Associates. But you could not tell what that particular money was being allocated for by the wording on the agenda. It was followed up in February with 12 more contracts, the first 12 adding $5 million each, a total not to exceed $60 million, plus another $2 million to Poe & Associates, and another $2 million to an engineering firm called Team Design. So all total, we're talking around $70 million in contracts to engineering firms who started to work in the darkness of the night on this Access Oklahoma program. Uh, to follow up what Randy said earlier, when I found out about it was when I read the front page of the Daily Oklahoman on February 23 of this year. On the front page, it laid out the proposed route, and that route came right through the middle of our house and barns. So you can imagine the shock and chagrin that it gave my wife and myself to see this published in the newspaper and not to have any forewarning or advance notice in order to muster a protest or to even ask a question about the Access Oklahoma program. And did the Turnpike Authority say, oops, we forgot, or what was their defense on this? They tried to take the position that somehow you could glean from the language they use, such as various Turnpike projects, that we should have been able to discern 
that there was going to be this Access Oklahoma program. It was an absurd and ludicrous argument to advance, but that's the argument that was advanced in defense of what the Turnpike did. And to show you how ridiculous it was, there are six members of the Oklahoma Turnpike Board of Directors. They are appointed to represent geographical regions throughout the state of Oklahoma. We took three depositions of three of those six directors, and not a one of them was aware of the Access Oklahoma program until it was rolled out by Governor Stitt, by Tim Gatz, and Joe E. Kelly at the board meeting of February 22, 2022. They were not aware of the project? Not at all. That's what they testified to under oath. Silence. Crickets. Yeah. Crickets. <laughs> so, I mean, that's not only shocking, it's astounding. Seems willful, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. So we took the position there couldn't be a more blatant or willful violation and the minutes of that meeting of February 22 made it very clear that the governor, who's an ex officio member of the Turnpike Authority Board, was going to appear, but he didn't advise, nor did the management of the Turnpike Authority advise the board members that he was going to be there until February 22nd to roll out this program. We will stop with February 22nd. Uh, I've got to do a commercial break. Randy Carter is here with me in studio, and Stan Ward, one of the uh, plaintiff attorneys and party to the uh, 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 access, access. Open meetings. Open meetings, yes. Move. You know, I call it excess. Sorry, Stan. Uh, access, access Oklahoma is, are here with me to explain uh, what has happened. It has been ruled in their favor, most of it, but there's a little bit more to come. We'll talk about that. You're listening to 1000 KTOK back in three. The uh, Director of Strategic Communications for uh, Pike Off OTA is here. His name is Randy Carter. On the phone, we have the attorney who represented this group, of which he is a member, uh, to the uh, Cleveland County and uh, the state Supreme Court about just the different nuances of this case. Uh, the plaintiffs claimed they had no warning, had no idea until they read it in the newspaper, and uh, the Turnpike Authority claims that they were wide open with information. So, Randy Carter, I'll let you start this and uh, pull in Stan Ward whenever you wish. Well, I, I certainly was not in the loop to know anything about it. I found out about it a lot like Stan. I happened to, I don't remember where it came up, but somebody indicated that something was going on. I got I happened to get on Facebook, and it was announced on Facebook, and I thought, oh, that's interesting, a turnpike through Norman I looked a little bit. I looked a little closer, a little closer. That's my house. I was sitting right there where the medium would go. So, no, there was no. And, and, and they're supposed to have public input. They're supposed to have. There's, there's got to be lots of justifications. We're finding out many, many things that are wrong with the Turnpike Authority and the way they go about doing business. It's my opinion that they're a, a failed business model that are trying to kick the can down the road. I've heard the word Ponzi scheme mentioned here, which is probably part of the reason that they were so willful in denying the public's ability to know what was going on before they voted on it. Stan, is it your opinion that they were trying to get more money to cover the existing bond payments for uh, existing turnpikes? Well, I think it's important to look at the turnpike authority historically. We have more turnpike roads per capita than any other state. There are 11 turnpikes in Oklahoma today. And in order to build a turnpike, it requires a lot of money. Money that's secured through the device of bond financing. And this bond financing comes from Wall Street. 
However, before you can go to Wall Street, there has to be interim or gap financing that's provided generally by local banks here in Oklahoma to get the project started. But the Wall Street financiers require that these bonds be what they call cross-collateralized. So all 11 turnpikes are the collateral security for any turnpike, which means that the three or four turnpikes that are financially profitable to the state have to support those that are not, because you could not finance a losing turnpike. Bonds, which is another word for debt, are usually 30, 20 to 30 year debt obligations. They carry interest with them. So let's start off with the proposition that the Access Oklahoma program is for $5 billion over 15 years. However, the five years or the 15 years and the $5 billion doesn't take into account the fact that of the $5 billion, that's the principal. That's not the interest on the principal. So when you add in the principal plus the interest over a 25 to 30 year period of time, you're talking some serious money, particularly when the entire state budget in any kind of an appropriations year is just a little bit over $10.5 billion. So you're talking about a project that on its face, principal alone, would be approximately 45% of the annual state budget. That's how large this project is. 45% of the entire state budget? That's how much it would be, yes, ma'am. Crickets. So (laughs) we have to have people that are willing to finance these bonds, they have to make sense, and they cannot be too perilous, or the bonds will not sell like the Wall Street investors want them to sell. So it's a tedious balance that we play this game of debt financing, and right now there's over $2 billion owed an outstanding bonded debtist by the Oklahoma Turnpike Authority. We uh, currently owe $2 billion before, $2 billion. We, before we add anything else. That's correct. Yeah, those the bonds right now, they've asked the bonds to be authorized, but the bonds have not been authorized, so that money is on hold. They're, they're, there's nothing coming in to the Turnpike Authority from these for these proposed turnpikes. Well, what happened, uh, Judge Olson gave his ruling, the summary judgment, in which he, he states in, in his second to the last point in the, in the ruling that any action taken on those two meetings by the Oklahoma Turnpike Authority on Access Oklahoma shall be invalid. Well, we heard that even though that was the ruling, the Turnpike Authority told the uh, contracting firms to go ahead and keep working on it, that they would work out the details. Well, I, I believe that uh, uh, one of the attorneys working with Stan, Stan's the lead attorney on this, but he's got a couple other great uh, uh, attorneys working with him. They found a particular uh, engineering firm, had, a, had an employee out doing surveying along, I believe, the east-west route, presented them with uh, information that those that they're, basically their job was invalid at this point. And as a result of that, uh, Stan, a- explain this to me about the uh, – uh, what you did with this letter uh, addressed to the council for OTA, if indeed they are still a council, as you stated in the in the letter, and what that's uh, what that's trying to accomplish. And and Gwen and I both were uh, uh, choking on the word disgorgement here. So uh. disgorgement, <laughs> yes. Well, there's a statute in Oklahoma called a key tam action that allows the public to recover monies that are unlawfully expended. And what you have to do is to give 
notice to cure this particular illegality and in this case to the OTA to recoup those monies that have been paid out by it to these engineering firms. So the demand letter is to the 12 engineering companies to get back into their coffers the monies that they have authorized to be sent and actually paid to these engineering companies who have been doing this work. So basically, if Stan, they, you want them, they need to return that money to the Turnpike Authority. That's what you're saying? Is that correct? That's correct. They have to return the money to the Turnpike Authority. And if there is a failure on the part of the OTA to send out the notice or to recoup the money, then the taxpayers, you have to have at least 100 taxpayers to make a demand to return the money, and they can then become what is known as the private attorney generals to recover these proceeds on behalf of the state of Oklahoma. What, so was, the, what first, was that title again? They become the what? Private the attorney pri- general? Private pri- attorney generals? That's correct. They get to act in that capacity to initiate litigation to recoup these monies. The monies are then returned to the OTA, less the costs that the court allows for the recoupment action. And when will we know about this action? Well, we won't know until we give them an opportunity to tell us how much money has been paid out and whether they intend to go forward and cause that money to be returned to the Oklahoma Turnpike Authority. Now, this is the Sooner State, and we have a history of jumping the gun. (laughs) They jumped the gun here big time, and they went ahead and paid out a lot of money, we believe, to these engineering companies. Remember, these are the $70 million, give or take, that have been authorized improperly during the January and February meetings of the Oklahoma Turnpike Authority. So we're now telling the authority, no, you got to go back and recover all of those monies, bring them back into your coffers. And if you fail to do so, we're going to do it on your behalf and charge you the cost of that particular service. Now, could the Oklahoma Supreme Court step in here and do away with all of your progress and say, we need highways so they win? Well, there's already been an attempt in our lawsuit to do two things in the Supreme Court. Number one, to prohibit Judge Olson from going forward with handling the case in Cleveland County. And number two, to make the argument that the Supreme Court should exercise jurisdiction over all issues. We received a favorable decision from the Supreme Court, and we prevailed on both of those issues as well. So as of now, the Supreme Court is hands off on everything you all are doing? I believe off on what we have done and the only way they would get involved again would be in the event that the turnpike authority decided to file an appeal and they would have 30 days from the date of the entry of judgment to file such an appeal with the supreme court the indication at this point is that they do not intend to appeal but who knows that was yesterday that they made that statement Tomorrow may be a new and different day. And so, uh, well, what, the, what about the property that OTA bought along Indian Hills Road? Well, as I understand it, uh, the property that they have have purchased is property that the citizens came to them after the announcement and asked them to buy that. So the Turnpike Authority has not, to my understanding, has not been going out and requesting property be to be purchased from the citizens 
these citizens have, are the ones that have initiated that action, as I understand it. But if they don't need the property? Well, yeah. I mean, they've obviously got the cart before the horse here. But, well, uh, I believe uh, in in their communication with the engineering firms, the Turnpike Authority said, we never anticipated this judgment. So they were just – they were planning to go full steam ahead uh, on this project. They they had – they had – not even thought it possible that uh, uh, there could be this much reaction and this much competent legal work to uh, uh, get this. It's stopped at this point, but that doesn't mean they're going to quit. You are so right about that. Competent legal work. You know, if if it were other parts of Cleveland County, there's a possibility it would have just happened. But they picked on the wrong people. That's true. They did they pick picked on, on the wrong Randy people. Carter and Stan Ward. <laughs> well, and uh, uh, Amy Serrato has been very, Amy very, Serrato. very, very involved in this, and she is a, uh, a civil engineer and knows uh, highways backwards and forwards. Uh, 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 whatever PE that stands for, that's what she is. <laughs> Petroleum. But, no, no. <laughs> but and and all three of us are right directly in line. In fact, I told one time uh, early on in this, I told. Uh, one of the people with, uh, representing OTA, I said, uh, uh, you guys made an unforced error by uh, putting this right over Stan Ward and Amy Serrato's houses. And, that, that's and, and they well, kinda, maybe that's why they said we haven't really drawn the line Well, yet. maybe so. Yes. Maybe and, so. And what about Lake Thunderbird, the impaired water supply well, and that's, the Rose Rock Sanctuary? Yes, and yes. no environmental studies. Oh, no, none, none whatsoever. But you know what's an interesting fact? I think one of the biggest problems that the OTA has right now is the way that they project their proposed toll revenues that they base the bond sales on. Stan, let me ask you this. I think that's that's pretty unusual to get a summary judgment in a case like that. Is that am I correct in that assumption? Oh, Randy, because we have a constitutional provision that basically guarantees you the right of jury trial, except when there are no tribal factual issues to be determined, when the issues are only legal in nature, there's no need for a jury or there's no need for a fact finder because the facts are already acknowledged and admitted. So based on that set of facts, a decision is made as to what law applies. So are you all confident that you have now defeated this proper this plan to put a turnpike through your homes? Uh, I would say no. What we've done is we've slowed down the process. We've they're they're stopped for now, but we don't suspect they're going to be stopped for good. Uh, they can go back to the legislature this session and ask specifically for authorization for these routes that we say are uh, uh, um, uh, not legally authorized. Uh, Stan, correct me if I'm wrong, but they could go back and create a an agenda in 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 line with open meetings and vote in these projects again, uh, or some some variants of them. But the legislature does have to approve these, don't they? Well, the, it's their it's their contention. Again, that, that, that legal authorization case could decide that as well. But what I think is interesting at this point, too, uh, the Oklahoma Turnpike Authority, as, as any state entity does, goes before the Council on Bond Oversight for approval of a bond issue. The, the Council on Bond Oversight approved, I believe, a almost $500 million uh, bond issue. Don't, don't quote me on that exact number. Um, for this access program, contingent on three things, as I understand it, three things. One, the, the, the successful resolution in favor of OTA of the two lawsuits that we've been talking about, and also the uh, validation of the bonds by the Oklahoma Supreme Court. So, Stan, help me with this and see if I'm correct in my assumption. Because right now the Oklahoma the open meetings case has been decided against the Oklahoma Turnpike Authority. That voids the uh, bond valid or the bond approval by the oversight committee. Am I am I correct in that assumption? I think you're correct in that assumption and. I think that there's not going to be any bonds issued until the litigation has been totally resolved because you have to convince the people on Wall Street 
that those bonds are going to be secure. And they give opinions on the safety and the security of bonds as collateral to uh, back up any kind of a loan, particularly if it's in the hundreds of millions of dollars yeah. or that's the billions of dollars. So they're going to have to have a good title. Let's just put it that way. Okay. When you sell your home, you have to have a good title or there's not going to be anyone that's going to buy that property with the policy of title insurance or a good title opinion. That's the problem right now the OTA has. They cannot get a good title opinion. So is that, is that like the bond ratings like triple A's or, or is that is that what you're talking about? Well, I think in this case, it's just whether there would ever be any bonds issued. Because when this litigation is outstanding, I do not think that they're going to be able to sell those bonds on Wall Street. Remember, they take the bond issues to Wall Street, sell the bonds at a discounted rate. They take the discounted dollars and they come back to Oklahoma with that money and they build turnpikes. So no one's shell out millions, if not billions of dollars on bad title. And what about their estimation of how much people will use these turnpikes? Well, that's what they base the bond issues on. They do they do projections. They hire a company to do projections and they've done they've used this same company for years and years and years throughout the whole history of the Oklahoma Turnpike Authority. And we found through our research that historically those projections of what total revenues will be that they base the, the value of the bonds on have been only 63% accurate throughout the whole history of the Oklahoma Turnpike Authority. Now, Gwen, I don't know about you, but when I was in school, a 63 was an F. <laughs> yes, it was. Well, let me just give you a good example. A friend of mine went to Missouri to pick up a trailer not too long ago. He was on two Oklahoma turnpikes. To get out of the state of Oklahoma from Norman, it cost him over $48. $48 going. $48 coming back. So these turnpike tolls are not cheap. And no. the public it wants to use them. It's a user pay proposition. You don't have to use them, but if you do, you're going to be paying, and you're going to be paying a large amount of money for the privilege of using those toll roads. Uh, when do the people have to respond about our recovering the money from the engineers? Well, we should have an answer back, I would think, within 10 days on that. Well, you will still accept people to uh, uh, sign on to that. We at, will, yeah. At that point, is that correct? Yeah, and I think, I think, uh, I think if anybody's interested in that, they can find that on uh, the No Turnpikes Facebook page. And All right, tell them again exactly what they would be supporting. Uh, they would be supporting, basically, here's that word, disgorging the money from the engineering firms and returning it back to the uh, uh, Turnpike Authority because these turnpike, these these contracts were are invalid. Judge Olson has ruled them to be invalid. Is that is that correct, Stan? That's correct. They were willfully violated and thus invalid. So that means they had, they need to return that money back to the uh, uh, toll payers, rate payers of the state of Oklahoma. And uh, I mean, that's public money, whether it's tax money or toll money or, or whatever. The, the Turnpike Authority is an instrumentality of the state, which to me means the same thing as a state agency. But Yes. What's the best way to get in touch with you all? Uh, in fa On Facebook, we have a page called No More Turnpikes. Uh, the Pikeoff OTA group has a web page called pikeoffota.com. Uh, we are in the process right now of updating that website, so the information might be just a little bit dated. But if anybody wants to make a contribution to the cause, uh, uh, covering, uh, covering legal fees and other other uh, projects that we're doing to fight these these turnpikes, uh, you're more than welcome to get on, uh, again, pikeoffota.com, and we'd appreciate any support. Yes. Stan, anything you'd like to add? Well, I'm just going to tell you, Gwen, that because my wife and I are plaintiffs in this matter, we have done this as a pro bono project in terms of our lawsuit. 
we are not receiving any funds from any third party source. Basically, we've been financing the lawsuit and donating all of our time to this project. And we greatly it's appreciate that, Stan. I say thank you for it's your service uh, for all of very, Oklahoma. Actually, you're you're representing more than you all in the path. But we've been out here 42 years. We want to stay here until God calls us home and. We don't want to have to move and go anywhere, so we have a lot of things to be grateful for during this particular time of the season. We're grateful for the great decision that the trial court granted us, and we hope to be going forward in that spirit of bringing this matter to a successful conclusion. Thank you, Stan Ward, for your time. and. Uh... Best of luck with you. Randy Carter, thank you very much for your time. Thank You're you. listening to 1000 KTOK.